Joining me now from New Hampshire, Jen Psaki, host of Inside with Jen Psaki on MSNBC and a former Biden White House press secretary, of course, and the marathon woman yesterday, all day, all night, on the air, anchoring. <laughs> and also with us, Michael Steele, co-host of The Weekend here on MSNBC and former Republican national chairman, plus Robert Gibbs, former Obama White House press secretary. Well, all New Hampshire veterans, Michael Steele, this is now a two-person race, Trump versus Haley. So what are her chances in New Hampshire of, of winning over nearly 40 percent of undeclared voters or more there? And then, you know, the Republican, I guess, the MAGA base staying home. I mean, how, do this, how does the math add up? I, I don't think the, the MAGA base stays home. I, I think they understand the urgency of proving the point, as Donald Trump uh, noted in the clip that you played uh, earlier, uh, that he wants them to turn out. He wants his numbers to grow to prove uh, the resiliency of his campaign in the face of this late uh, movement by Nikki Haley. Here's Nikki's problem. Both of her U.S. senators from her state have endorsed Donald Trump. You just you mentioned a little bit before uh, the congresswoman uh, Congresswoman uh, Mace has endorsed Donald Trump. So the reality of it is, even in her home state where she's drastically behind, dramatically behind Donald Trump in South Carolina, um, there's not the momentum for her. Her candidacy is based on those who don't want Trump. That's not the Republican base. The Republican base is very clear they want Trump. So I think Donald Trump takes 50% uh, plus in tomorrow's voting. Um, I think this race effectively comes to a close. And, you know, Nikki may want to limp into South Carolina. I, you know, even if she does a strong second, I don't think that's that evangelical base that makes up the, the vast majority of the voters in South Carolina will will suddenly switch from Donald Trump to her. The, the momentum and the energy isn't there. And the hot rhetoric now, Andrea, that she's demonstrating is six months too late. You can't start running a campaign 24 hours out from New Hampshire uh, against Donald Trump. This should have been happening months ago. And Jen, New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu, he's was backing Nikki Haley. He's criticized Donald Trump. He's been a, a strong critic of Trump for quite a while, but particularly now the claim of immunity, absolute immunity for any president. So on Meet the Press yesterday, he also made it clear under, you know, tough questioning from Kristen that he'll still vote for Mr. Trump if he's the Republican nominee. Mm -hmm. How can you say that you'll support Look, him? At, at the end of the day, I think most, most Republicans statement. are going to get, get behind the Republican nominee. I'm hoping that it's obviously uh, Nikki Haley. Despite yeah. his comments on immunity, despite what you said about the insurrection, you would still vote for Donald Trump in a general election well, against Well, according Joe to Biden? the polls, most of America would. It's all coming together for Donald Trump, isn't it? That's exactly right. And that's a perfect example of it. I mean, I've interviewed him a couple of times. He's coming on our show tonight. You've interviewed him before. And every yeah. time, typically, he has said over the last several months, Donald Trump will not be the nominee. He was also predicting that Nikki Haley would win New Hampshire, of course, because he endorsed her, even as of a couple of weeks ago. And his tune has changed on that. His tune has been now more about a strong second. It has been, obviously, that endorsement of Trump from just last week. And that does tell you that there's an alignment here, a move towards inevitability of where this is headed. I would also note, just to add to what Michael said, I mean, I've been here since Saturday. Trump had a rally here on Saturday night. He didn't surround himself with New Hampshire electeds. He surrounded himself with South Carolina elected officials from her home state, the next big competition, to sort of line up this feeling that there's an inevitability towards his nomination. So it is sure feeling like that at this point in time. Robert Gibbs, let's talk about DeSantis for a moment. He was supposed to be the the shining knight, you know, who would <laughs> support the anti-Trump movement, uh, couldn't figure out how to be both critical of Trump and avoid his ire, because Trump had helped him become governor and felt that he had been, you know, really spurned and was really angry at him. So here's what he had to say about Trump in November last year versus what he said when he dropped out of the race. You could be the best governor ever, and he'll trash you. You could be a terrible, corrupt politician, but if you kiss his ring, then all of a sudden he'll praise you. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear. 
So how does this all work? How authentic can that be to voters? How persuasive? Well, I don't think it strikes anybody as overly uh, authentic. I mean, I think, look, they're, they're, it's politicians doing what politicians do. I don't think anybody's surprised. I think you'll see a stampede of not just Congresswoman Mace, but my sense is tomorrow when Nikki Haley loses by 15 or so points, you're going to have a huge amount of that Republican apparatus that, that hasn't endorsed Donald Trump rushed to endorse him. I, I, you know, I, I think, Andrew, you touched on it. Ron DeSantis never really figured out, other than hoping the Republican base would walk away from Trump, never really figured out how to pry them away from Donald Trump. Always just became sort of an imitation of Trump. And quite frankly, as we've said before, in, in a race like this, why would you go for the imitation if you could have the real thing? I chuckled a bit with what Michael said, and I know he didn't mean it like this, but when he says that Nikki Haley could finish a strong second, I think it's important to understand second in this place is last, right? So there really is no avenue for Nikki Haley to go. This is her best chance to win a race. This is the electorate that's most likely with those undeclared voters to give her a shot at that momentum. And there's no evidence that that's at all happening on the ground in New Hampshire. Well, just to point out, uh, Robert, as you and Jen know from firsthand experience with Barack Obama, New Hampshire surprises. You know, in <laughs> we 2008, do know that well. <laughs> Hillary Andrew, Clinton. I'm still surprised at what happened in 2008. It's, uh, that's been, we're going on 16 years, so absolutely anything can happen. But boy, you know, in, in that in that instance, and I think you were with uh, then Senator Clinton at that event. You could feel something shift. And I don't think the challenge for Nikki Haley is that she's done anything in the last really 72 hours to drive that dynamic shift, uh, something she needed to try to do. With these endorsements, the only person that's kind of driven that is Donald Trump.